Hello. First of all, I just wanted to start off by thanking everybody that has viewed any of the videos that I've posted. Um, I've only posted four, and the last one in four days was over 600 views, or 30 likes, no dislikes, all positivity, all good comments, all good feedback. Um, I didn't expect that at all as, as a brand new channel, to be completely honest with you, I didn't expect anywhere near that. So I really appreciate um, all the feedback that's been so good and so positive because I wanna build this channel on that. Again, thank you guys so much. Um, I would like if more of you hit that subscribe button. I know it's asking a lot, but I am trying to get that first 100 out of the way so I can create a URL, it makes this a lot easier to share, makes the channel grow a little bit quicker. Um, so if you would be so kind, this is the first and last time I will ever ask you to subscribe before the video actually starts. I will never do that again. I don't like when people do that, but again, I am trying to get a little bit more traction on certain things. And I promise there's gonna be a lot of content worth following. Um, there's a lot of direction for this channel and I'm going to commit to it. So if you like what you see at all, hit that subscribe button. It would really help me out a lot. Um, anyway, the Fuji video that I did last uh, did so well that I'm going to ride that wave. I'm gonna make another one about my custom button settings, uh, the layout that I've chosen on the X100F. I think doing it in the first place is, is really useful. The first thing I do is go through a camera and I set up the custom settings to what I'm either used to or try to translate from something to another. Because I shot Canon for so long and then Sony mirrorless and then back to Canon and then Fuji. Uh, I've had like little stints of all of them kind of in the middle, but I was always focusing on those brands. I want to be able to be comfortable and be able to shoot quickly. So it was the first thing I do out of the box and I just wanted to go over what I did and why. And uh, hopefully it'll help you guys in the future. If this is a camera that you're interested in, uh, maybe my reasoning will spark motivation on, on something that'll make you shoot a little bit different. One other thing I will mention since the last video, as I was recording that video, my gold um, shutter button showed up. So this is the complete look of the camera. All black, black hood, black thumbs up, and then a nice gold soft shutter. So that thing's been amazing. Uh, I linked it in the video last time uh, for these ones. I'm very happy with it. It looks really good. It fits perfectly. The one I had was a little bit off for this camera, but this one is, is immaculate. So I'm very happy with that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get straight into the menu settings. Okay, so you're gonna go into your menu. You're gonna go up to your button dial setting, down to function setting. This is the layout here that I'm talking about that I'm just gonna go over and, and why I've chosen to do this. So function one is this top button right here, FN on it. If there was an option to make this movie record start and stop, then I feel like that would be a good button for it. Hopefully they maybe add that in a firmware update down the line because there is no shortcut that you can set to quickly record. You have to actually change it to movie, but I think that would be a really good spot for it. Next to the shutter, it's just very natural. You know, shutter taking pictures and then this one taking movies. Um, if you needed to, I think that that would be good, but I don't plan on using this camera for video at all anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. So my FN1 button is set to wireless communication. This camera's wireless uh, communication to mobile is actually pretty good. I love having that on the go. I'm not really using this for a lot of like professional style shoots with a lot of post-production anyway. And the fact that my wife is a blogger and she has deadlines and things that she needs to hand in at certain times, this is great. We can go out and shoot. Let's say somebody sends her some jewelry, we can go out and shoot it and I can send it to her phone. She can edit it on her phone because mobile editing software is so good nowadays that if it's only being used for social media like Instagram, the file's so little, it looks great. So that's a really good feature and that's why I have it just at the top there. I really like that um, that functionality. Just you know, quickly send it to my phone, um, and that's why I've chosen that one. So that's FN1. FN2 is referring to this button right here. It's right in the center of the the switch that goes back and forth. It's actually the main part of it. So it's nice and easy to to hit with your middle finger if you even rest on the shutter, or you can actually just do it. It's really natural. So that I have chosen the film simulation. When it's gloomy out, because we're in winter, there's no color, so I will be choosing the black and white for the most of winter right now. Um, once the sun comes out and once colors start showing again, or if we leave town, then I will be switching it. Um, so I like having that nice and easy because the black and white on here, like the acro simulation is really, really nice. So I keep that one nice and, nice and simple on FN2. FN3 is talking about the left directional button here and I have chosen the photometry 
uh, section. So that is where I can choose like my metering set, uh, settings. So I like the focus and recompose workflow. I've very, I've always done that. I'm very used to it. A lot of times when film cameras came out when I was a kid, that was like a big feature is that you could hold the focus, recompose and keep the focus wherever you originally did it. So I still shoot like that most of the time. Um, it's very natural to me. So when you shoot like that, um, it meters on what you originally focused on. So if I'm in a dark room and I focus on somebody and then I want to recompose them to a third or something, but I like having them silhouetted and I want to use more of the backlight, then I can change the metering this way. I can change it from spot to, you know, multi or center weighted or something like that. Cause I usually am shooting on spot. So that's just nice to, to keep it there. So that's FN3, um, FN4, I have changed to ISO. I've always used the right directional button for ISO on cameras. Um, I don't know why I just have always had that there. So that was, that was another given for me that the right button was going to be ISO. So I have the three auto settings, um, customized on this, so I can just go through them and change that. FN five is the bottom one. I have this as the ND filter on and off toggle. That's super handy. Very helpful. I think that if you're going to use this camera at all, you should have the ND at some sort of shortcut just because that's like a big selling point for this. So you want to be utilizing that when you step out in the sunshine, but want to use those nice high apertures. So I have the FN five, which is the down key as the ND filter. I have the A E L A F L button as the face focus. So if you want to choose your metering because I'm on spot, you can't use the face tracking um, because I'm just assuming it probably no matter what it finds the face, it focuses to that, it meters to that. So you can't choose spot metering or anything like that in the photometry settings. But I like having it every once in a while for my wife's stuff because we need to make sure her face and her eyes are tic tac sharp when we're shooting for her, her blog and stuff like that. So if I want to go back to some face tracking, then it's good for that. Or if I'm doing like group stuff, then it might be handy to toggle on and off. Normally I'm not shooting like that 90, 95% of the time. I'm just going to be shooting spot metering, um, with the focus and recompose kind of style, but that I know is there to switch. If I do need it, instead of trying to move around the spot and stuff like that, um, especially if she's moving. Cause a lot of times if you're shooting a model or any sort of fashion work, they are moving around. There's not a lot of standstill. So that is, that's a great one for me to have available. Lastly, the R dial. So I usually have that to none because I'm using the thumb grip. Um, I don't want to press that by accident. So I just have that one not anything because if I'm going to hit one by accident, it's probably going to be that one. So I'm not really sure if I will use that down the road, but as of right now, I don't mind that just being nothing. So this was nice and short and sweet. I just wanted to go through kind of my workflow with the camera now that I've had it for a little bit and I've been playing with it quite a lot. Um, even in minus 40, we've been walking around and trying to shoot with it, um, going out to lunch and stuff like that. So hopefully this has maybe sparked some inspiration on how to configure your camera what settings there are that are making your life easier, things that you realize you're going to need on the on the fly. That I really like about having these controls over the custom function settings. So yeah, these are mine. And like I said, if you like this video, like it. Um, if you like this channel, subscribe to it. And I will be answering any questions about the camera below for sure. Um, doing a lot of future videos with this. And I just started my first vlog today with the DJI Osmo Pocket to see how that thing holds up as far as looks, sound, and in this kind of weather and just functionality for a vlog. So there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up on this channel. Not only is it going to be plain background camera review stuff, it's going to be a lot more fun moving forward. So anyway, I will see you in the next one and hopefully this has helped you at all.